Hello Lumberjacks, I'm Carl Jean Watson for SFA TV2 NAC Edition. Today, we'll be covering Showcase Saturday, the 100th edition of the Stoneport Yearbook, SFA Homecoming, and a reminder about early voting. Stay tuned for all this and more right here on NAC Edition. Stephen F. Austin State University's Showcase Saturday event is scheduled for Saturday, November 2nd, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. This open house is designed for pros prospective students and their families to explore life at SFA. Attendees can participate in tours of the campus, resident halls, and the Student Recreation Center, while also meeting with faculty and learning about more than 120 of the university's academic programs. Interactive sessions such as mock classes and an academic fair will allow students to experience the classroom environment and learn about specific majors. Stephen F. Austin State University's yearbook, The Stone Fort, is ending after publishing its 100th edition. The Stone Fort yearbook started in 1924 and has served as a way to remember SFA's history. Here's what the Stone Fort's current editor in chief, Laney Wise, remembers best about working at the Stone Fort. I would say that my favorite part about working at the Stoneport Yearbook or the best memories that I have is just getting to connect with my staff. I have, for the past two years, managed a really wonderful staff of 10 students, six photographers and four editors, and I have had such an amazing experience with every single one of them. Uh, we're just like one big happy family and getting to see their progress throughout the year and get to know them as people and become good friends with them has just been super amazing. I also just really like the collaboration. Um, it's really fun to watch the book come together over the course of the year and get to see everybody's hard work come together and then when the book is actually printed it's like getting to see something that you worked so hard for and it's a really rewarding experience. Homecoming has come and gone but the memories will last a lifetime. Let's take a look back at some of the best moments. Excitement was high as SFA celebrated Homecoming 2024 in style. From the annual bonfire to a thrilling football game, students and alumni came together to celebrate homecoming weekend. The festivities kicked off with the much-anticipated bonfire on Friday night. For almost 90 years, SFA students, staff, alumni, and Nacogdoches residents have gathered under the East Texas stars as flames lit up the night, marking the start of the homecoming festivities. The festivities continued with a concert opened by the band Heat Above out of Flint, Michigan. Fans showed up to hear the rock band perform their hits and covers of popular songs from a plethora of genres. The concert was handed over to the night's headliners, the Josh Abbott Band. The band put on a show with their Texas country sound highlighted by guitars and fiddle. The highlight of the concert was when Josh Abbott sang the song She's Like Texas where he name drops Nacogdoches. On Saturday, the homecoming tailgate brought even more excitement as student Greek life, clubs, and alike gathered on the lawn in front of Homer Bryce Stadium, grilling and playing games while getting ready for the football game. And just around the block sat the SFA Alumni Association tailgate, where there was live music, food trucks, and a pregame meal for those who attended. The main event of the weekend was the homecoming football game. The Lumberjacks faced off against the HU Huskies on a beautiful Saturday night. Fans filled the stadium to watch the Jacks get out to a 24-6 lead at halftime. During the break, seniors Todd Moon and Sidney Blanchard were crowned homecoming king and queen. The Jacks rolled to a 55-6 win to cap off a very successful 2024 homecoming weekend. The 2024 presidential election is just around the corner, and residents in Nacogdoches are gearing up to make their voices heard. Early voting begins on October 21st and lasts until November 1st at designated polling locations throughout Nacogdoches. This is a great opportunity to avoid long lines on Election Day. Please make sure to check your local listings for specific early voting locations as they depend on what precinct you live in. 
According to the U.S. News and World Report, 70% of students struggle with mental health since entering college, but only 37% actually seek out university mental health resources. Students are hesitant to seek help because of concerns of costs, negative past experience, and just the overall feeling that healthcare is ineffective. The SFA Health and Wellness Hub offers a variety of counseling services to students including individual and couples counseling, QPR, suicide prevention training, and group therapy. Claire Fight, Director of Counseling Services, had this to say about the group therapy services. Counseling services encourages SFA students to participate in group therapy, offering a variety of options. Students from diverse backgrounds can seek support for specific experiences or join more general support groups. The group therapy services are open and free to all SFA students, and each group meets weekly. Stay with us, coming up next, we're highlighting graduate student Cassandra Ramirez and her work with a nonprofit organization, Este Poder, right here at SFA. You won't want to miss this. Welcome back, Jax, to Nacadition. My name is Lauren Mitchell, and today we are sitting down to highlight graduate student Cassandra Ramirez. Cassandra is a 2024 graduate of SFA and is currently pursuing her master's degree in public administration. During her undergrad, Cassandra was a part of multiple organizations like Texas Rising, Powered by the People, College of Democrats, and even worked alongside Beto O'Rourke during his campaign for governor in 2022. She is also a member of Sigma Lambda Gamma Sorority Incorporated. Now, Cassandra works for Este Purer, a nonpartisan nonprofit organization that focuses on fostering civic engagement throughout East Texas communities. Welcome, Cassandra. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm good. It's How is your homecoming? Very eventful, to say that. <laughs> well, first, I want to start off kind of talking about the organizations that you've been a part of in the past, like Texas Rising, um, Powered by the People, College of Democrats, stuff like that. And I know you said they were nonpartisan and some of them were partisan, like College of Dem is also working around, uh, working along with Beto Aruk. Can first you explain what the, is the difference for some of our audience that doesn't know the difference between nonpartisan and partisan, and as well as what exactly was the purpose behind these organizations? Yes, so for nonpartisan and the nonprofit organizations that I worked for, they really fall under two factions depending on the kind of funding that they receive. So for 501c3 organizations, they actually have restrictions to where they cannot endorse any candidates. Um, they can't align with any party or like back anyone and offer their support publicly because of the type of funding that they receive, which is what Texas Rising was doing initially. Um, and then for partisan organizations, they of course have the availability and the capabilities to endorse candidates and work alongside them to promote their agendas. Okay, and what was some of the work that you did with Texas Rising? So Texas Rising was an amazing organization that really opened my eyes to the political world here in East Texas, but they cover six key issues, which was like healthcare, criminal justice reform, environmental justice, voting rights, LGBTQ plus equality, and women's reproductive health. And was there a difference between Texas Rising and Powered by the People? Those were both nonpartisan, right? So yes, uh, Powered by People was centered specifically towards voting rights, where Texas Rising covered a more expansive advocacy range. And what was it like to work alongside uh, Powered by the People? That experience was something that I'm eternally grateful for. However, it was a very small group. Um, it was led by Beto O'Rourke, who is a well-known Democratic candidate that has run for multiple positions. But there was perhaps like six student fellows across Texas. So we could have been a little bit isolating. Um, and then working as the only captain for a con congressional district one, which is what we used to be at the time. Um, it's hard because East Texas has very tricky geographical terrain. Mm -hmm. And when did you make the switch from nonpartisan to partisan? I think it was approaching the 2022 Senate um, campaigns and the Better War Work versus Ted Cruz. I think it was about 2021, November 2021, where Better War Work announced that he was, in fact, running. Prior to that, I was a student fellow with Powered by People, but after he did announce that he was running, Powered by People did transition. Um, and I was actually hired on that following spring as the youngest full time staff for Better War Work's campaign. And what was it like working alongside him in his campaign? It was a great experience. I think the staff was just, you know, 
incredibly supportive. However, to be completely honest, I wish that the campaign would have invested more in East Texas and East Texas communities of color because my pod, per se, which would be my team, um, was based in Dallas, Texas, which is three hours away. And it's a completely different world from rural East Texas, where we're living now. Mm -hmm. and I know you did have a part in bringing him to speak um, on campus when he was running. Was that event, I'm pretty sure it was stressful, but how was it being able to see him on campus talking to students and the crowd that was um, gathered there? So we also had hired on student fellows on campus. So I have a whole bunch of thanks to extend to uh, Leslie Chalco, Owen Miller Thomas, and Allison McCutcheon, who were the student fellows serving alongside me at the time. And without them, the, the event really wouldn't have taken place. So I can't take all the credit for it. But it was really impactful and very rewarding to see him on campus. And the, the turnout was insane. I think we had about 800 people come out, Dang. which was astonishing. And so now you work with the nonpartisan, you went back into nonpartisan um, nonprofit group Este Poder. So what is um, the purpose behind Este Poder and what exactly is your role with them? Yes, so um, just like me, it can feel kind of isolating. You can feel a little bit burnt out after an election cycle, especially when you're doing some partisan work. And back in 2020, we had three founders who were Belen, Lena, and Emily, who you know, went to school together at the University of Texas at Tyler, came together, formed Estepoder, um, just because they felt that there was not a whole lot of investment or urgency to organize in rural East Texas, communities of color specifically. Um, and when we turned to other organizations like JOLT, MOVE, or even partisan organizations, we just weren't a priority. So when they formed Estepoder in 2020, they had the vision that we are gonna be the sole organization to lead the movement and build community power in rural East Texas communities of color. And that's through year on organizing, civic engagement and leadership cultivation. So building up the next leaders to take charge in our communities. And can you kind of explain a little bit what civic engagement is and how it's beneficial to the uh, younger generation? Yes, so civic engagement is actively getting involved in the political climate or even like, you know, the civic side of community planning and this can go from you know voting which everybody expects registering to vote but it can also be sitting in on city commissioner meetings city council meetings school board and just taking the charge and you know holding your elected officials accountable because they are making the rules that are pertaining to you locally mm -hmm. and so how really does um i know you all have student fellows right um, along with este Porter. so what do the stu do y'all student fellows do so our student fellows are actually under one of the two programs we have. We have Engaging East Texas, which is meeting our community, and then Young Texas Civic Engagement. So under Young Texas Civic Engagement, we do a high school organizing, which is a separate thing completely. But our student fellows are really our boots on the ground meeting our college students in East Texas because there's quite a bunch of universities here. Um, you know, engaging the students, meeting with them face to face, and being the most accessible to students since East Texas does have a tricky geographical terrain. We started with two campuses, but I'm proud to say that we've expanded to four in the last year. That's good. And I know you started off as, as a student fellow and now you're the role organizing manager. What is um, some things that are coming up for your student fellows that are here on campus? Like with some events or some things that they're doing around the community and stuff like that. So we recently, um, last week, they had their second general meeting because they are a student shop here on campus that students can come and join. Um, they had a what's on the ballot event, really breaking down what is on the ballot without endorsing any candidates, of course, but also making it engaging and having the opportunity to help students make a voting plan while they do something fun and simple like creating friendship bracelets. Um, coming up, they do have their Jacktacular Halloween, which they're just distributing candy to students. And next week, um, next Monday, they'll be having a second What's on the Ballot event to you know, inform students like, hey, election day is tomorrow. This is what's on the ballot. This is how you can prepare. This is where you are voting based on the precinct that you are in and just equipping students with everything that they need to cast their ballot the following day. Okay, and what are some ways that students can get involved? So of course, um, like every registered organization on campus, they can 
view us on the handle. Um, that's where they'll find any information about meetings. Um, they could see our constitution to see if our visions do align. But other than that, we do have a Instagram page, which is our biggest page um, on social media where we post what events are coming up. And on that, we have our link tree where students can opt in to volunteer, which they'll just fill out a quick survey from there. I will go in the back end and send them a welcome email and follow up with them via one-to-one -one if necessary. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Cass, Cass, Cassandra. If you want to get further involved with the Este Poder, you can check out their Instagram by scanning the QR code or follow them at Este Poder. Coming up later on Nacogdoches, we'll be taking you to the spooky side of Nacogdoches with a look at the ghosts of Millard's Crossing. This annual event brings history to life in a haunting way. Stick around to see what's in store, if you dare. Thank you so much, Cassandra, for such a great interview. Let's take a look at the historic Millers Crossing Village, where the spooky holiday is in full swing. This year, Millers Crossing is bringing together the community of Nacogdoches with games, fascinating historical facts, and delicious foods for all ages to enjoy. From family-friendly activities to tasty treats, there's something for everyone to experience. So if you're looking to get into the Halloween spirit while celebrating our local history, Millard's Crossing is the place to be. Welcome to Millard's Crossing, a fascinating historical site that offers a look into early American life. Located in Nacogdoches, this charming destination is more than just a collection of old buildings. It's a window into the lives of the pioneers who helped shape the community. Founded in late 19th century, Millard's Crossing features carefully restored homes, a bustling general store, and even a schoolhouse that once served the neighborhood's children. As you stroll through the grounds, you'll find yourself stepping back in time. Each building has its own story to tell, showcasing the everyday lives of those who lived here. Imagine the families gathering in the general store, exchanging good news and goods, or children laughing and learning in the schoolhouse. The atmosphere is filled with a sense of history, making it easy to picture what life was like so many years ago. Throughout the site, you'll also discover exhibits that highlight the challenges and triumphs faced by the early settlers, from farming and trade to family life and community events. These stories come together to create a rich tapestry of history. You might even meet knowledgeable guides who can share fascinating tales and answer your questions. Whether you're a history buff or just looking for a unique outing, Millard's Crossing invites you to explore, learn, and appreciate the heritage that continues to influence our lives today. So come and experience the charm and stories of its important historical gym. I'm the executive director here at Millard's Crossing. And as you can see, I have a lot of stuff on my desk, especially this week for what we're doing. As you can see, we mm -hmm. have the pumpkin carving um, kits. That is one of the activities that is new this year. We purchased pumpkins for people to then be able to purchase pumpkins um, to carve. We give them the tools. There's also some little bitty ones for them to paint. The little children, it's gonna be so fun to watch and fun to see for everyone because we have pumpkin pie eating contest. So what we're doing is we're just taking the already made pumpkin pie that you would put in a shell, mixing it with a little whipped cream for the children under five, giving it to them in a little bowl and letting them go to town. And then for the next group up, we have, which is ages five to 10, they get a little bitty pie. And then we're going from 10 to 16, they get a medium pie and guess what? 16 and up, get the big pie. So that's one of the things. Also, um, we'll be doing Harry Potter. There's a petting zoo, pony rides, headless horsemen, train rides, hay rides, a lot of vendors this year, food trucks, a mounds of candy. We have over 12,000 pieces of candy. That's a lot of candy to give out to children. Then in the evening from 7 to 10, if you feel like getting dressed up as an adult and coming out here and having a few um, cocktails, you might want to say, and dance, and come dress in costume, you have an opportunity to win $300. There's a lot of favorite parts to this place. Um, you know, it's been around for a long, long time. It's a jewel to Nacogdoches, and everything you see out here gives history it gives of what could have been or what was and let's face it guys if our computer systems goes down and we can't get food we can't get you know stuff in a modern way it may go back to that 
As we conclude our visit to Millard's Crossing, we hope you've enjoyed not only the rich history, but also the spooky charm that comes alive during our Halloween event. This unique celebration blends the fascinating stories of the past with the fun and thrills of the season, creating an unforgettable experience for visitors of all ages. Throughout the event, you'll encounter costumed characters from history, ghostly tales that echo through the buildings, and activities that bring the spirit of Halloween to life in a way that honors our heritage. Each haunted corner and spirited storytelling session offers a glimpse into the lives of those who once walk these grounds, reminding us that history can be both educational and entertaining. We invite you to come back year after year to celebrate Halloween at Millard's Crossing, where the past and present intertwine in delightful and spooky ways. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to sharing some more stories and fun as we continue to explore our historical roots together. As we wrap up the haunting fun at Millard's Crossing, let's remember that the season isn't just about tricks and treats. It's also about taking action in our communities. Before we go, a final reminder for our entire Nacogdoches community. Early voting is happening now, and this is your opportunity to have a say in the decisions that will shape our future. Local elections impact us in so many ways, from the schools we support to the roads we travel on, even the services we rely on every day. Your vote really does make a difference, so let's all do our part. Check out your local polling locations, they're open and ready for you. Remember to bring your photo ID and take a moment to scan the QR code on your screen to find a polling, location, polling station that's closest to you. It's never been easier to be involved and make your voice heard. Don't wait until the last minute. Let's show the power of our community this election season by coming out strong in early voting. Together, we can make a real impact for Nacogdoches. Thank you all for joining us on NAC Edition, And as always, Axum.